Hello! Today, we are going to discuss the topic of abnormal uterine bleeding of an idiopathic cause. We will first give a brief introduction, including the definition, pathophysiology, and epidemiology of abnormal uterine bleeding. This is followed by clinical presentations, differentials, and investigations. In the later part of the presentation, we are going to talk about both medical and surgical management of abnormal uterine bleeding. Abnormal uterine bleeding, idiopathic, was previously termed as dysfunctional uterine bleeding, or DUB. It is defined as any abnormal uterine bleeding in terms of abnormal frequency, regularity, duration, or volume with no identifiable cause. Abnormalities in frequency include menstrual bleeding that start at intervals of less than 24 days or more than 38 days or even amenorrhea. Abnormalities in volume include changing tampon or pad after less than 2 hours or passing clots the size of a quarter or larger. Intermenstrual bleeding is also included. Abnormalities in duration refers to prolonged menstrual bleeding defined as bleeding consistently lasting more than 8 to 10 days. It is a diagnosis of exclusion after ruling out pregnancy and all other possible pathological causes, including genital tract pathology and systematic diseases. In a typical menstrual cycle, estrogen is responsible for endometrium proliferation, while the rise and subsequent decline in progesterone is necessary to trigger endometrial slothing. The pathophysiology of AUB can be anovulatory or ovulatory. And ovulation is the most common cause, where the ovaries produce estrogen but no progesterone. As the corpus luteum fails to form, this results in continuous estrogen stimulation of the endometrium, causing continuous endometrium proliferation without progesterone inducing bleeding. The endometrium continues to proliferate until it outgrows its blood supply, breaks down, and slacks off in an irregular pattern. Ovulatory AUB can be due to luteal phase deficiency. Luteal phase deficiency causes low progesterone levels, which results in irregular shedding of the endometrium. AUB is a common gynecological problem. Approximately 5% of women between the age of 30 to 49 will consult a physician each year. It is most common at extreme ages of a woman's reproductive years. Most cases of dysfunctional uterine bleeding in adolescent girls occur during the first two years of the onset of menstruation, when their immature hypothalamic pituitary axis may fail to respond to estrogen and progesterone, resulting in anovulation. AUB affects up to 50% of perimenopausal women. In the perimenopausal period, AUB may be an early manifestation of ovarian failure causing decreased hormone levels or responsiveness to hormones, thus also leading to anovulatory cycles. Taking a history. First, complete a gynecological and obstetric history. This includes recent or current pregnancy, thorough menstrual history, sexual history, contraceptive history, and risk factors for endometrial cancer. For the menstrual history, it is important to elicit the age of menarche, duration and quantity of each menstrual period, frequency and length of each cycle, and presence of abnormal bleeds such as intermenstrual bleeding, postcoital bleeding, and dysmenorrhea. A review of systems and medical history may reveal underlying conditions associated with AUB. Pertinent points include a detailed medication history, presence of bleeding, or endocrine disorders such as polycystic ovarian syndrome. Physical findings. The goal of the physical examination is to look for systemic illness such as pallor, fever, ecchymosis, enlarged thyroid gland, or evidence of hyperandrogenism. For example, obesity and PCOS is associated with AUB. The patients may present with hirsutism or acne. A complete pelvic examination should be performed, with particular focus on potential sites of bleeding, size and contour of uterus 
and presence of adnexal mass or tenderness. As idiopathic AUB is a diagnosis of exclusion, differentials of AUB must be first considered. The International Federation of Gynecology and Obstetrics has developed a classification system for causes of AUB in non-gravid women, which are differentials to be excluded. There are nine main categories arranged according to the acronym palm cohen They are polyps, adenomyosis, leomyoma, malignancy and hyperplasia, coagulopathy, ovulatory dysfunction, endometrial, iatrogenic and not yet classified. The palm site refers to structural causes that may be evaluated by imaging techniques and or histopathology and the Cohen site by investigating underlying medical disturbances. As AUB is a common presentation of endometrial cancer, further investigations must be conducted to exclude complex endometrial hyperplasia and endometrial cancer where necessary. Given that iatrogenic causes of bleeding can occur such as hormonal therapy with OCPs, HRTs, and IUDs, taking a good medication history is important. As AUB is a diagnosis of exclusion, the investigations are guided by information from history and physical examinations, given preliminary differentials. The following investigations are some commonly performed ones for AUB. These can be divided into bloods, imaging, and others. For bloods, an FBC iron panel, coagulation profile, beta HCG, TSH, 3T4, FSH and LH, E2, and serum androgen, if PCOS is suspected. For imaging, pelvic ultrasound is the first line to assess for structural causes such as endometrial polyps. Transvaginal rather than transabdominal should be conducted when possible. For others, this includes a pap smear and endometrial biopsy. If necessary, a hysteroscopy and DNC can be considered. We will not be addressing acute management of AUB, but rather expectant management. We will be discussing the different treatment modalities currently available for the treatment of AUB. Treatment options depends on age, severity of bleeding, desire for future fertility, and presence of associated symptoms. Medical treatment of AUB can be subdivided into non-hormonal or hormonal treatments. Non-hormonal treatments include the use of NSAIDs or anti-fibrinolytics. Non-hormonal treatments is recommended for patients with contraindications to estrogen, such as smokers, presence of multiple cardiovascular risk factors, history of stroke. NSAIDs, such as methanamic acid, naproxen, can be used to reduce the levels of prostaglandins by inhibiting cyclooxygenase. Analgesic effects provided by NSAIDs may also help to alleviate the symptoms of dysmenorrhea. Another group of medications that can be used to treat AUB is antifibrinolytics. Most common side effects is nausea and vomiting. They are not shown to increase the risk of thromboembolisms. There are several hormonal therapies for AUB. This includes combined estrogen progestin contraceptives, intrauterine devices, and progestin only therapies. Estrogen progestin contraceptives enable bleeding to be more regular, lighter, and reduces dysmenorrhea while providing contraception. There are various routes of administration, including orally, via transdermal patches, or vaginal contraceptive rings. However, Estrogen progestin contraceptives are contraindicated in patients with increased risk of thrombosis. Progestin only therapies can be used in patients with contraindications to estrogen use or prefer not to use intrauterine devices. For those who do not desire pregnancy in the near future or with contraindications to estrogen, intrauterine progestogen releasing systems such as Mirena is first line. It acts by preventing endometrial proliferation, thus reducing the duration and quantity of menstrual blood loss. As it prevents endometrial proliferation, 
It has a contraceptive effect and can also treat endometrial hyperplasia. Disadvantages of the IUS is that insertion may be regarded as invasive by some and may require local anesthesia and dilatation in nulliparous and perimenopausal women. Frequent intermenstrual bleeding and spotting is likely during the first few months. Additionally, there is a risk of ectopic pregnancy, perforation and expulsion. The use of GnRH agonist less commonly used but can be adopted to create hypoestrogenic states and cause medical menopause. A useful application of GnRH agonists in managing AUB is to suppress endometrial growth before endometrial ablation. Surgical interventions may be required for patients who have not responded to medical therapy. The options include endometrial ablation and hysterectomy. The indications include patients who have completed childbearing, patients who prefer to avoid medical therapy, or those who desire definitive therapy of hysterectomy. Endometrial ablation is a minimally invasive treatment option as an alternative to patients who do not want to undergo a hysterectomy. Endometrial ablation results in the destruction of the majority of the endometrium down to the bacillus layer. As such, there is little remaining endometrium for the regeneration of the functional layer. A variety of ablation modalities are available, including laser, rollerball, hydrothermal balloon, or microwave. Hysterectomy is a definitive surgery for AUB and should be reserved for women who are refractory to all other treatments. Hysterectomy can be total, in which the uterus and cervix are removed, or subtotal, in which only the uterus is removed. Hysterectomy can be performed with or without oophorectomy, depending on age of patient. Hysterectomy can be performed abdominally, laparoscopically, or vaginally. A benefit of hysterectomy, other than being a curative treatment, includes eliminating future risks of uterine cancer. However, there are risks of perioperative complications, and depending on the operative approach, a prolonged recovery is necessary. And that is all for the presentation. These are the references. Quiz time. Which of the following treatment options is contraindicated in a 28-year-old smoker presenting with AUB? The answer is C. Question 2. Which of the following must be ruled out first in any case of AUB? The answer is B. Question 3. Which of the following is the definitive management for AUB? The answer is D.